motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Peace and greetings, family. Queen here. Another episode of thequeendome.com. We are continuing with the episodes Quantum Manifestation. This is part two. Before we get started, or before we continue, let's take a moment to get into the present moment. So we'll take a couple of deep breaths, and we'll get into the present moment awareness. Mm. A great day to be roaming the earth. A great day to be alive. Man, I had a fabulous morning this morning. Just finished up um, my yoga, my meditation, my workouts. Feeling so energized. And I just came to the realization that I have zero pain in my body. Zero I have absolutely no pain in my body. I know a lot of people, 99% of people that I talk to, even myself, I used to experience pain in my body. I have a curvature in my spine, so I would always have these, you know, back pains and stuff like that. But I just realized today I have zero pain in my body. This is heaven. <laughs> this is absolutely heaven. This is bliss. This is nirvana. This is what it is. Mm, mm, mm. Beautiful. So as you can imagine, I'm feeling absolutely, absolutely on top of the world. All right, so we're going to continue with quantum manifestation. This is part two. And I've been reading from the Energetic Institute out of Australia, this article. So we'll just dive in and continue. In my related article, Embody Spirituality, Compassion and Care of Oneself, I expand the definition of the self to include our more energetic and subtle aspects, which have either a psychological, emotional or mental, or spiritual expression and purpose. This four-bodied basis is a better representation of the human condition in respect to how we exist in a duality expression of matter and energy consciousness. Some theories in quantum physics state, however, that what we really do is keep choosing one single possible storyline each moment in time, whereas there are infinite choices in every moment that we can choose, and each choice we make then opens up the next unlimited set of possibilities for the next moment. In these theories, we are not on a predetermined fate line. We unconsciously or consciously choose the outcome in each moment. And surprisingly, sometimes a decision occurs in the present or past moment. And the effect occurs in our future, and sometimes we get the effect in the past or present from a decision taken in the future, past, present, future, all coexist simultaneously, and each is inter interdependent on the other. Reread that line a few times, as it took me quite a while to get my head around it too. All right, so we'll reread it. it says we get the effect of the past or the present from a decision taken in the future, for past, present, future, all coexist simultaneously, and each is interdependent on the other. Some heavy stuff, isn't it? 
This is the aspect of reality that troubles and doubts anyone considering our reality as we are conditioned to believe and expect a linear past to future one-way continuum of reality. Events from the future which displace or affect the past seem like Marty out of the Back to the Future Hollywood movies. However, these are current theories in quantum physics taken seriously in some of their schools of thoughts. In fact, theorist and researcher Ken Wilber, 2002, sees the truth of how we exist as being matrix of four types of realities of truths. Truth is not as fixed or objective as it would seem. Each type of truth expresses a different but interconnected subset of reality. These truths are number one, objective, two, subjective, three, intra-subjective, and four, intra-objective. Quantum physics defines the way in which we are connected to the universe is twofold. Firstly, we exist beyond our gross particle body. Science has now shown how we have a subtle energy bioelectric subsystem running through and around the gross physical body. Man operates in a typical zone of 62 to 78 hertz frequency, according to the Taino technology instruments used to measure this bioelectric energy field. Outside the physical body, there are increasingly subtle energy fields which surround the body like a kernel or a set of babushka dolls as explained in my article in The Four Bodies. Each functions to interact between the body and the energy wave of the universe outside that body, self we perceive as being where we start and where we stop. This energy is in a waveform and pulsates outwards like a ripple from a drop stone in a pond into the universe into which it is the subtle bridge between our gross body and the universe. It is this that maintains our connectedness to all things. Our human energetic vibrational consciousness is considered by healers and esoteric philosophies to transmit outwards and affects the waveform like universe as well as being our most subtle sense awareness that picks up information from the universe and feeds it into our gross body circuitry via cellular consciousness and our cellular receptors in our skin cells. The outbound transmission from us is critical to our reality. As neuroscience tells us that our brain operates from images and our discrimination and cognition of objects gives rise to feelings, then think of our reality as operating in a constant loop where we take in our reality from out there via all our sense awarenesses, processes it via the mental consciousness processor which use our nervous system and brain neural circuitry. These in turn give rise to feelings which are effects of cellular biochemical reactions and pathways running in our body. They're talking about our, our naughty system, or you can say the tree of life. Our mind is believed to process the received sense awareness information by accessing the hippocampus in the brain, which holds an object image database. Here it is now being considered that images and information is somehow held on the body's cellular hard drive, just like a hard drive on a computer, about the object being perceived. Right at this point, things can get a little distorted. We all form conclusions and feelings to objects in our universe. In Buddhism, it is said that we form a factor of mind that sees all objects as either desirous, neutral, or negative. Most of these judgments are formed from early life experiences and learned conclusions about such objects. In the brain held database, conceptual image of the object being perceived contains judgments or feelings, triggers which are good or bad. The consciousness of the person includes this extra body held information as being part of the reality of the externally perceived object. This ingrained extra information may be assessed via other primitive parts of the brain such as the amygdala which trigger states such as fear, terror, anger, judgment, and bodily reactions such as sweating, shaking, muscular tension, crying, etc. This extra information pollutes our reality about the object in the moment we perceive it. 
for that information is not part of the object's reality. It is only part of our own internal, personal, learnt reality. This process can be readily seen all the time in action. In fact, art is built on this premise. No two people will ever completely see the same thing in an artwork or agree to its meaning for abstract pieces as it is subjective as every person pollutes their sense awareness information they receive from the artwork with whatever they hold internally about objects that get either an exact or close fit to either an aspect of the perceived artwork object or the entire art piece itself. In fact, we do this polluting all the time. In every moment, everything we perceive, this is why none of us have an objective reality of anything, and instead we have a subjective reality because of this inherent aspect of how we function as human beings. The bottom line is we are being bombarded with intense environmental stimulus in the information age. We are overloaded and overstressed as the pace of change and the required pace of adaptation to the change creates more and more burnout in society. This in turn then results in the adoption of more and more medicating behaviors and addictions in an attempt to deal with the pain and dissatisfaction being felt by so many in society now. Our slower evolutionary adaptive processes cannot cope with the pace of change demanded upon it. We are becoming more reactive and more stressed from this place. Psychology has shown how stressed people eventually can collapse into a victim mentality where life is simply what happens to them. They lose their sense of control over life and how to take back control of that life. Anxiety and then depression often result for these people. The bottom line is we are still being bombarded with intense environmental stimulus in the information age and we are being hyper aroused by marketing and object experience promotion by our own society. Example, drugs, pornography, game consoles, reality TV, which work to hook into some of these impulses that are increasingly driving our society. We are suffering more and more and our impulse to escape this suffering is hurting us more and more towards unhealthy choices which we actively market and sell towards those who suffer. The additional toxicity of our food, air, and environments assaults the very body-mind self that must cope with these demands. More and more people are collapsing under the crisis of lifestyle. If this was the complete story, then that would be bad enough, but it's only half of the picture. I've been talking about the reception of information via sense awareness from out there or from the inherited emotional and physical DNA we are born with or that we learn. This is the inward half of the loop. The outward half of the loop actually starts at the same moment we perceive the object as well. What, quant <coughs> what quantum physics is starting to propose is some quarters and what esoteric philosophers and spirituality has always proposed is that the human mind has the power to manifest or co-create the outcomes in our own realities. This proposition works with the outward half of the loop of reality creation. Under some quantum physics theories and according to many schools of esoteric mysticism, our mind and the object being perceived arise together in the same moment. There is no universe nor any other object out there which is just sitting around in particle form waiting for us to discover it. Recent quantum physics research into string theory supports this concept. Our mind causes the object to manifest in particular form from a resting waveform position in dependence on the mind that is observing, observing it. There are quantum physics principles around the idea known as the observer effect, which are employed in all experiments in the subatomic level. This implication is huge. If the mind of a person is responsible for the object arising, then does that imply that the state of the mind influences the type of objects that actually arise and therefore create that person's reality? Answer to that is absolutely yes. Now, before we consider this point, let's, let's describe how the reality manifestation is believed to work. As already stated, the mind and the auric field around the body connect us to all other things in the universe, including the space between objects. The mind energy of intention is the first movement of mind. 
It is consciousness or unconsciousness in its first active movement or principle. The waveform energy created by this movement or motion affects the energy around us. The universe around us that exists is its empty form as waves with no actual form. It is unformed, it's empty of form. It is just probability of being something and not just something, but the possibility of being every possible thing that can possibly be conceived by a human mind. And then some. Whew. Ooh, y'all need to rewind that, <laughs> hear that again. Mystics call this the void, the cloud of unknowing, the emptiness, the cloud of possibility, the key determining factor that makes one of the unlimited possibility of things that can arise from emptiness, from wave, form, energy into form and substance is the mind via its intention. In every moment, your mind creates the reality you see. In every moment, your mind creates the reality you see. Now, in this theory, there is no objective particle reality out there to be found. All that happens from a quantum physics view is that an object or event pops into life a form from the cloud of possibility, from the soup of wave energy. At this point, the energy goes from being wave-like to being particle form that has a basis in time and space. Theorists are asked why the physical form does not then just revert back to wave form when our attention goes elsewhere. Quantum physics proposes that there must always be an observer mind or a measuring device that keeps the point in time and space in particle form. Quantum physics theorists argue that any sentient being with consciousness, even insects, possibly fulfill this requirement. And the strange criteria of measurement devices seems to include some abstract criteria as well. In any event, this matrix of such observing or measuring entities or conditions creates the basis why all objects can be consistently found at a point in time and space repeatedly, which is the usual reality we observe and participate in. It is not the full picture of reality though. Even though it reliably means that our experience in space and time is able to consistent and hence taken in an absolute and, and fixed Time and space only exist because our mind, which creates the object, believes in time and space. And so we create that too. The hippocampus part of the brain is believed responsible for the lineal time-based storage of memories. The created object or event which pops out of waveform into particle form is sometimes called the probability or probable object. It was the most likely choice of the infinite choices that could have arisen. The objects that you stumble across that have already popped into your reality courtesy of another's observing mind or from some measuring device will be readily perceived by you in the same moment in time and space as another person. As already explained, you may perceive the object differently and you have different feelings about it than other, uh, another person, but as an object you will both perceive the same name object. An object already present at a fixed point in time and space will always appear in the same spot when your mind perceives that same point in space in another time, unless something else has changed or shifted the object in another point in time to another point in space. Objects are real in this sense. It's just the sense that they exist in both particle and waveform states and that the mind plays a part in the object arising in its place. This is the key part missed by the common classical science understanding of reality. This is how we possibly create really reality is extremely important to grasp. If we create our reality, then we are doing it from our mind. Our mind can observe from an unconscious place or from a conscious place. These are the two primary states of the body mind. Both apparently have the same creative effect. The nature of the human condition is that most of us live much of our lives from a reactive, unconscious state of mind. For example, how many times have you driven somewhere and when having arrived, have you forgotten the journey you took to get there? 
This is the dual unconscious state of mind that many of us lapse into for much of the time. From this place, we accept and experience the world as an objective reality that just happens to us. We are ignorant of the fact that we can influence and possibly create our own reality. Instead, many victims who actually are unaware of how they may be creating an unconscious reality in every moment without realizing it, we moan about how our lives unfold unaware that we create it. The opposite of this is the conscious appreciation that we create our reality in every moment and then set about doing just that from a clear and positive intention. This is creation psychology or creation spirituality that books have been written about. This is the basis of much shamanism. This is enlightenment spoken about in Buddhism where one is awakened and sees directly the emptiness of the universe and sees the energy shift between waveform and particle form as mere dreamlike phenomena and where one stands outside of time and space as a lineal reality that our minds wrongly project. It means that the fixed and the inanimate objects still appear as before, but we can actually create new experiences and new objects that are not yet manifest or real in a given time at a given point in space. The waveform energy that can be influenced consciously via intention by our mind to pop a different reality than would be the case, then if we have uh, less to chance how the same process occurs anyway with an unconscious mind with regards to how we create our reality. Principally, we must transform ourselves from being unconscious to more fully conscious. If we take control of our reality, this is firstly a process of overcoming our inward-looking distortions, obstacles, and reactive victim thinking, where we often refuse to take responsibility for, from our lives, for our lives. From a place of responsibility, there are techniques and processes as well as mindful realities that one needs to adopt to go from the victim who describes the world they see towards a person who sees the world they describe. One goes from a victim to one who manifests, from a fate to a destiny, from unconscious to conscious life. So we'll stop right there and um, we'll pick up with the article part tomorrow. So we'll do a part three as well. This thing might come out to be three or five parts. Woo! That was some mind. Did, did you just hear what I read? This is some mind-blowing stuff right here. This is showing you how to go into the quantum field. Your reality is, think of, think of your reality like this. Think of your life like this. You have a blank canvas. You are the painter. And you don't need to be a Picasso or a whoever famous painter, right? But you are a painter. You got a paintbrush, you have multicolors, and you got a blank canvas. This is your life. So now you get to pick up any color, any 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 drawing, any way that you want to create this beautiful painting. You have the power to do that because you hold the paint brush. So what this what this what this what this part is talking about here is shifting from victimhood and we just talked about that in a previous episode where I talked about having a victorious mentality right so we're talking about shifting from whoa it's me why is this always happening to me I can never get this right why don't they like me blah 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 shifting from that lower vibration shifting from that lower frequency that's only going to attract more of that crap but moving into a victorious mentality where you can say you know what if I've got people around me I don't like, let me create some new people around me. Let me get into the workshop of my mind and create the people around me that I want. Let me create the type of love, the type of feelings that I want to feel. Let me create that, right? Your world that you're living in is your creation and yours alone. Until you understand that and take responsibility of that, you're going to always be at the whims of whatever happens to you. 
and it just is what it is. So you have to, you have to, number one, realize that your life, where you are, the emotions that you're experiencing, either happiness, joy, peace, unconditional love, or lower vibrations, is your responsibility. It's not anybody else's responsibility to give you joy, to give you happiness, to give you this, to give you that. Each of us have what? Imagination. Each of us has the ability to create. That right there is a gift within itself. Just think about that. Like I was just telling you earlier, like I just realized this morning, I have absolutely no pain in my body. None. Zero pain in my body. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven on earth. Now, did I stay in victimhood? Oh, I have scoliosis, so I'm supposed to have pain. I have a curve in my spine, so I'm supposed to have pain. Nah, I didn't accept that as my reality, as my truth. So I decided to do something about it. I took responsibility. So when you stand up and you stand in your power and you decide, you know what? I'm tired of living this mediocre life, right? I want happiness. I want joy. I'm not going to wait for anything outside of me to create the feelings of joy, of happiness, of unconditional love. Of gratitude. This is why meditation is so, so, so important. Meditation allows you to bypass your conscious mind and start to reprogram yourself. Put in new programs. Put in new applications. Put in new things that you want to create. So this part is powerful, man. I'm, 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 all, I'm all jacked up. This part right here, powerful. Move from victimhood to a victorious mentality. You ever been around people and, 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 and all they talk about is, woe is me, woe is me, and why me, and why? I can't, I can't stand those people. Can't. I got to get out of their sight. I got to get away from them. Because they start pulling down on your frequency, start pulling down on your energy. Right? It's nothing like being around someone that's upbeat, positive, that sees everything as beautiful, that sees everything as, a, as an opportunity to expand more, to express more, to create more. That's what this life is all about. It's about what do you want to create? What do you want to manifest? It's up to you. Nobody's going to part the sky with a, with a wand in their hand and grant you your wishes. You are your own genie. Go for it. Abracadabra. Peace. Unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.